Hi, so I wanted to show you a nice, quick, easier way to make the shields that we're making for the Days for Girls. So we do have these instructions, which um, are from the Days for Girls website, but they're quite long and involved, and they involve lots of basting and marking and that sort of thing. So I don't like to do that. I like to just get it in my head how it's nice and easy to do. So this is the shield that we're making. It refers to these as the pockets. This is where your liners tuck in. And then these are like your wings. So these go around. We have our studs on there. They go around and clip under the underwear like that. And then you've got your pockets where we put our liners. Okay. So it's made up. You've got your top, your bottom, your pockets. And then inside is a piece of this PLU fabric. So it has a shiny side and a matte side. And what we need is for, in the finished product, the shiny side needs to be facing up. It's much more effective um, as a waterproof layer if it's facing up rather than if it's facing down. So for the purpose of showing you, I'm going to use two different color pieces of fabric. So this is gonna be the bottom of our shield when it's finished, and this is going to be the top. So with your PLU, you've cut it out, and we actually have just trimmed um, little triangles off the corners just to take away some of the um, mass amounts in the corners. So we want that shiny side up. Then we're going to put what will be the top layer, um, face side up. So this is called making the, the sandwich, I call it. Then you've got your pockets. Now your pockets are not quite square and then you iron them in half and you need to do a top stitch along um, the folded edge and that's to reinforce it. So on your finished product, you can see there, um, it's stitched along there. So we're going to put that down so that the stitched edge is towards the middle of your sandwich on both ends. Then we're gonna put what would be the bottom face down onto your sandwich like that. Now, because that PLU is waterproof, we don't use pins because if you poke holes in it, it won't be waterproof anymore. And so I just use these quilting clips and I just put one on each edge to hold it. Now you don't have to make sure everything lines up exactly. We're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're going to trim Okay, so then bring it over to your machine. And we're just going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. So you notice I'm not doing any over sewing at the end because we're going to turn it and trim it and reinforce it anyway. So that saves you time. So we're just going to sew down both edges. Okay, we'll just do the second one to show you. And I've just left them long so as we turn it they don't pull out. So what you're going to do now, um, and I'm not going to show you on video because it's tedious, but now you're just going to double check that you've caught everything on both sides, which I have. And then we're going to trim this down to a very close um, couple of mil edge. So I'll just do that and then I'll come back. Alright, so as you can see, I've just trimmed really closely to the edge there. 
you want to leave only about two millimeters all the way around so if you have a look you can see that I'm really close but I've still left enough fabric there on both sides so that it's not going to pull out of my stitching um, again the instructions will tell you to use big scissors for this or a small rotary trimmer personally I find a really small pair of sharp scissors is the most accurate for trimming something like this um, and it's much quicker and there's less chance of you cutting over your stitches all right, once you've got it like that, again, remember this purple side is the base of our finish liner, so it's the underside. We're going to now turn it inside out. So you can see we've only stitched down each side, so the ends are still open. So I'm going to turn it inside out. So I've turned it. <laughs> and you're going to turn it so that you're going to have your pockets on the bottom, okay? So you can see that I've got both my pockets here on the bottom. Inside you can see now my PLU is inside my sandwich facing my top layer with that shiny side. The matte side should be facing the bottom. Okay, You can at this point in time if you want to press it. Make sure your iron isn't too hot because remember that is a plastic layer in there so you, you want quite a cool iron. I feel really confident just um, not pressing because I can just push what I'm doing out with my fingers and still get a really neat finish but if you need to press please do. So now we're going to stitch the ends of the pockets then we're going to trim them and turn them around to the front. Okay so again we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance on our sewing. These ones I do um, actually do a, a back stitch, a finishing stitch on. So you just do one and then the other. And like I said, before you sew it, just give it a push out in the corners so that you've got all the bits of fabric pushed out nicely. Alright. So then again, we're just going to trim those. So I use my small scissors, like I said before. Trim that nice and close. You can trim your threads on this one as well. And then we're going to turn them around. Push your corners out nicely. You'll be able to see then that you've got all your stitching correct. And so you see now that that pocket is on the top. Okay, I'll just do, turn the other one as well. corners out tight so now you can see we have a shield so we're almost finished now what we need to do is top stitch all the way around when you do your top stitching again just make sure all those corners are rolled out nicely and what we're actually going to do as we top stitch around, we are going to do a back tack over each one of the pockets to reinforce it. You want to have your stitching really close to the edge if possible and it's going to encase um, the trimming underneath so that it doesn't um, split or come undone. And this is really important to the life of the shield. The girls are going to get three years out of this so your top stitching is really important. When I get here to the pocket, I then go back over it. And this is just to add a little bit of reinforcing.
There you go. You can see now it's finished. You can give it a, um, a light press if you want to. We've stitched, we overstitched over each one of these pockets just to reinforce that because that's going to get the most pressure as the girls are putting their liners in. Now we're going to mark um, where our snaps go. So on your shield you need to put a snap on each one. Remember when you do this, of course, double check as you go. One needs to be facing up, one needs to be facing down. And they need to be a pair. You need a boy bit and a girl bit, okay? So they fold around and they clip into each other like so. So we made up a little template. So we just traced around the edge of our, our fabric. And then we put a mark a quarter of an inch in. So that we're just going to put a mark there. So you can use um, any marker really. It doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. So we'll put a mark on each one. And on this one, flip it over and do the other side. That will help remind you when you put your snaps in to have one coming from the top and one coming from the bottom. And it doesn't matter which one's which. So I'll go get the snaps machine and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now it's come to the point where we're going to put our um, snaps on our liner. And I've got my husband showing you this because uh, it's usually a job he ends up doing. So this is our cam or our snaps machine we call it and it has two different parts there so um, one of the parts you'll put your what I call the boy bit of your snapping so it's the bit that sticks out and the other one will take your girl bit so the the hole um, and you need one of each for each of your liners so it doesn't matter which one you start with and it really doesn't matter which way up you do them either it's, yeah, as long as you've got one of each so you put that bit into the machine you snap the matching piece of the snap into it then you need your bit with the spike so this is the tricky bit and this is why I usually get Phil to do it because it you get quite sore fingers um, poking it through the fabric so he's going through both layers of the cotton and the PLU so it just takes a little bit of encouraging to get that through and that goes right on that black dot that we marked earlier and as you see you can't see it now anyway because it's under there so then he'll put that into the snaps machine and he'll push down now you don't want to do put too much force because you will crack your snap so have a practice on a couple of other bits of fabric first but you do want to make sure that that dot in the middle has flattened out. It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but you'll know when you're doing it. If you've got a, a bump in the middle, um, they won't snap together very well. So it needs to make sure that it's nice and flat. And then you just do the other side. So this is why we put one dot on each side because that helps you to remember which way so that you don't get them on the wrong side, basically. into there then he'll poke that from that dot side down which means it will be up the opposite way to the other side short fingernails are good for this job so it's can't really see on the white fabric but yep that's sticking out into your snaps machine Again, you need to press down fairly hard, but you don't want to press it so hard that you crack your snap. That little dot in the middle needs to be down enough so that they will then snap together. Pick. And you can see he's done it upside down. So if he actually reverses it, <laughs> that's the way that it's actually going to be finished when they put it in their undies. So there you go. All complete.